Welcome to another video on electric potential lines and equipotential lines, as some, sometimes you may say here. Um, this video will look at a little bit more of the pictures and diagrams that I wasn't able to draw up on the board from last night um, and will be helpful in preparing you for a class tomorrow and whatever you may have in class, if it may be a quiz. So without further ado, more electric potential lines. So the electric potential of a point charge is really, it looks like kind of like we can visualize that, equating it back to our um, gravitational potential uh, analogy. We can, it, it looks like going up a hill. And so as you get closer to a positive charge, the potential becomes greater. And that potential, the electric potential there, depends on how big that charge is and how far away you are from it. Um, so it's there, and they're inversely, it's inversely proportional to the distance. So as you get closer and closer, as the distance away gets smaller, the potential gets greater. As the charge gets greater, the electric potential gets greater. So the electric potential is directly proportional to the amount of charge that you have. Now, a positive and negative charge, and these are for point charges, by the way, a positive and negative charge have inverse um, potentials. So uh, the potential increases as you get closer to a positive charge and decreases when you get closer to a negative charge. This is because we're concerned with what would happen if you were to put in some test charge, that some small, small, small amount of test charge right there that has a positive amount of charge. So that's what um, the idea here is focuses on if the test charge was positive. There's an equation that relates all this. It says that the electric potential is equal to K times the charge, K is the Coulomb's constant, Q is the relates to the charge, divided by R, which is the distance from the charge. So there we have our equation and how to cal calculate the electric potential for a point charge. Equipotential surfaces refer to the points or the surface where there's the same potential along all of those along that surface same electric potential throughout there due to a charge. Now, if you see here looking at this picture, the equipotential surfaces are 3D. Last yesterday, in the other video, I was only drawing them as 2D surfaces, kind of hard to draw in 3D on the board, but you can kind of get the idea that it's more of a shell around some charge where there is the same potential at all points along that surface. Um, as you get closer to the charge, once again, you have a higher potential. As you get away from the charge, the potential decreases. The um, potential is inversely proportional to the radius from or the distance from the charge. And you have an electric field line is always going to be perpendicular to the electric potential lines. So if you have this electric potential surface, this, this circular or the spherical um, equal, equal point of potential around a charge, the electric field always moves at a perpendicular through that surface. I started to mention this a little bit in the last video about how if you move along the, uh, an equipotential surface or an equipotential line, there's no work done. This is because the force is always going to be perpendicular to your motion. So throughout here, there's no work being done by the electric force. Now, if you move from a surface of higher potential to lower potential, there's work being done on you, so that's moving away from the charge. If you're moving towards the charge, there is, uh, for, from a lower potential to a higher potential, you are doing work to move um, from a lower potential to a higher potential. But again, there's no work done when moving along an equipotential surface or line or any point along that. Remember, because the potential is always the same there, and the force is always perpendicular, so it's not that force uh, does no work. The electric force does no work in a, a moving charge or anything like that. Here we have two charges, a positive and a negative charge. The electric field lines are shown in the red, or the reddish color, maybe orange, I'm not really quite sure. It looks pretty red. But we move away from the positive charge and towards the negative charge. So in this case, there is an electric field around all this case. There's an electric field between both of them. And as we move away, 
from the positive charge and towards the negative charge, the potential changes. The equipotential surfaces are represented by the blue, I guess I want to call them obliques, ovals, I, whatever they are, that's what they are. And if you kind of were to flip this on its side or rotate it 90 degrees, like along, uh, spin it on the y-axis, so now we're looking at the horizontal, you would see a big mountain type area shooting up from the positive charge and a valley type hole in the ground going from the negative charge because there's a high potential near the positive and there's a low potential near the negative. This means that something, some positive charge will want to move from an area of high potential near the positive charge to an area of low potential near the negative charge. So once again, we have the electric field with um, drawn in red with the arrows indicating its direction. And then the blue shows the electric the equipotential lines around these two charges. Notice the straight up and down line here um, that cuts right through the middle. The equipotential is the same along that whole line. The electric potential is the same along that whole entire line all the way out to infinity. For a parallel plate capacitor, or just a plane capacitor, as we'll start shortening it down now, um, the equipotential surfaces are parallel to the actual plates themselves, the two uh, parallel plates. Uh, the electric field moves uniformly through, so that's the unique thing about a, about a parallel plate capacitor, is that there's a uniform electric field on the inside. And the surfaces are parallel right along there, and the electric field actually depends on, and it depends on which version moves. You want to see here, it's, a, it's kind of easier to understand, uh, I think, the uh, book formula, but we're going to go with the AP just because that's what we're going to be fully, that's what we're gearing our way towards. And it says that the average electric field depends on the voltage, where they say V is for voltage, and this is where we get screwed up with the difference between electric potential and voltage. Voltage is really the difference or the change in electric potential, but it's just given as V on the AP sheet, divided by the distance between, that is uh, between the plates. So um, this gives you the average electric field moving right through because it is a uniform field. So it's the volt difference in voltage or electric potential difference between the two plates and the distance between the two of them. So here we have another example with our capacitor, and we'll start on the left. Um, we have the positive and we have the negative side here, and this will, we have in, within it, we have the uniform electric field going away from the positive side towards the negative side. Um, and for a positive test charge, there is a high potential, high potential energy due to position near or close to the positive charge. It wants to move from position A towards position, uh, excuse me, position B towards position A. And as it goes towards the negative side, there's a lower desire to move. I mean, the idea here is that relative to these two points, there is a potential built up. There's a difference in amount of charge in here. There's a potential built up between the two of them. Um, and that's really what uh, a parallel plate capacitor incorporates this the removal of charge from one side and adding it to the other side, or buildup of charge on one side and adding it to the other side. Now, if we looked at the actual potential, equipotential lines, as we move across here from the parallel plate capacitor on the picture on the right, you have a 20-volt potential all the way off, all the way to the left side, um, and then starting right at the positive. And then as you move through that spacing, the potential continues to drop as you go closer and closer to the negative plate. Um, from here, you can kind of see the idea as how we're going to get develop a battery. So batteries are just larger versions or something that stores electrical energy and creates that potential to move. Thank you very much. I hope you enjoyed this. See you tomorrow in class. Make sure you come in with any questions.